Well, welcome back to the flipped classroom. Our topic today is Riemann sums, and we're specifically going to focus on the left, the right, and the midpoint Riemann sum today. So what is a Riemann sum? Well, it's used to approximate definite integrals. So again, notice that word approximate. We're not actually getting the, the actual area under the curve. We're just approximating it. We're getting close to it. Now, it might be an over approximation or an under approximation, but it's definitely not um, the actual area, the exact area under the curve. So to solve these left, right, and midpoint Riemann sums, we're going to focus specifically on rectangles. So let's start with our first example. Let's say we want to approximate the area under the curve from 0 to 4 of x squared plus 1. Okay, now if I wanted the exact area, I would integrate, get my x cubed over 3 plus 1x, plug in my upper bound minus my lower bound. But I don't want that exact area. So I'm going to use a Riemann sum to do this. Now they'll be specific on which type they want you to use. So let's start off with a left-hand Riemann sum. And they'll tell us the amount of subintervals they want us to use. And let's start with a nice, easy four subintervals. And we'll say of equal length. Now, they don't always have to be equal length, um, but today, you know, for the time being, um, on our first day here, we're going to make them all equal, equal length. So the first thing you want to do is definitely sketch out the function x squared plus 1. So in every notebook, we should be sketching that x squared plus 1. And I would make it fairly large. We're going to draw inside of this picture. Okay, And our bounds went from 0 to 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, we're going to be drawing in there, so make it large enough for yourself. Now, since we said our shape is a rectangle, all you need to start thinking of is the area formula for a rectangle, because again, the integral is the area under the curve. So hopefully you're thinking just a simple base times height. So the base, I hope, is pretty obvious. From 1 to 4, if I want to fit four rectangles in there, I'm just going to take the distance between my integral, I'm sorry, from 0 to 4, and divide that by my four subintervals, so I should have a base of 1 for each one. Now since we're starting with the left-hand Riemann sum, so let me stress that again, left-hand Riemann sum, that means the left-hand corner should be on the curve. Alright, so left-hand Riemann sum, left-hand corner on the curve. Right-hand Riemann sum, right-hand corner on the curve. So now I'm just going to carefully draw in my left-hand Riemann sum. So notice, I'm going to start at my lower bound, which was 0. Okay, so I'm going to start there, I'm going to put my point there. And I'm going to go up on the left-hand side. Now remember, we said each base is going to be 1, so I'm going to fit one rectangle in here. But we're going to go up on the left-hand side. When we hit the curve, we're going to stop, arrow over, and come down. All right, we'll draw the second one in. And remember, we said four subintervals, so we should see four rectangles between 0 and 4. It's going to start at 1, so I'm going to go up until I hit the curve, arrow over, and come down. And I'm going to repeat that pattern. I'm going to go up on 2, hit the curve, arrow over, and come down. And lastly, up on 3, arrow over, and come down. Now remember, we said these should be equal bases, so they're all one apart. And our goal is to approximate the area. Now hopefully you can already see if you're an under or overestimate. And you'll notice this rectangle might be hard to tell, but as I start to draw these in, I have these gaps here. There's no area in my rectangle taking up this space or this space or this space. So hopefully it's obvious that this is going to be an under approximation. All right, because I have all this extra area not accounted for. So how do we actually get this answer? Well, like I said, we're just going to start with that nice, easy base times height formula. So let's jot that down. Area equals base times height. And I'm just going to go through each rectangle and compare them. This first rectangle has a base of 1. 
and its height, I'm going to say the height is sitting on the curve here, so that's going to be at 0. So I'm just going to say it's at f of 0. And then I'm going to add on to get my total area, the height of, or the base of the next one. So this rectangle also has a base of 1. And its height is sitting at 1. Again, if I follow it up, the height on the curve there is at 1. So f of 1. Add on. I have another base of 1. This height is sitting at 2. One more base of 1, and the height is at 3. So you'll notice since I had four rectangles, I should only have four terms that I'm adding down here. And since I'm talking about the left-hand one, I use the 0, the 1, the 2, the 3. I did not use that upper bound of 4. So let me say that again. I use the lower bound 0, 1, 2, and 3. f of 0, f of 1, f of 2, f of 3. Now all I have to do is simply evaluate each of those functions. And I'm going to pull out a common GCF here. You'll notice they all have that base of 1. So I'm just going to pull that 1 out in front. And then I just need to evaluate my f of 0, f of 1, f of 2, and f of 3. And obviously to get those, I'm just plugging these numbers back into my function f. So 0 squared plus 1, etc. And if my calculations are right, I got a 1, a 2, a 5, a 10. Add those up, that's 18 times 1. So I have an under approximation of 18. All right, well, we're going to use the exact same function, and this time we're going to do a right-hand Riemann sum. So again, 0 to 4 of your x squared plus 1, and a right-hand Riemann sum. So I want you to go ahead, and we're going to resketch this one out in your notebook. Um, so take a few seconds, get your x and y axes down, and sketch your x, plus one, x squared plus 1. So we've got that same graph drawn, and I just want to stress, in a right-hand Riemann sum, the right corner of the rectangle is on the curve this time. So I still have my four equal subintervals. And instead of in this first one going up on the left, instead of me shooting this up on the left, I'm going to go up on the right first. And I'm going to go right up till I hit the curve, and then come over and make my rectangle. I'm going to go to 2. I'm going to go right up till I hit the curve, come over and hit the rectangle. Same with 3, and same with 4. Hit the curve over and touch the, the uh, curve there. So again, I just want to stress, whoops that the right hand of the corner should be on the curve for a right hand Riemann sum. All right, well, we're just going to calculate that area again, and hopefully it's obvious to you that this one should be an over approximation. Look at all this area you're including that's not even under the curve. So we're going to use that same formula. It's just a silly rectangle, base times height. Uh, it's very convenient. The bases are all, again, 1. It's very nice of them. So I'm going to pull that out as my GCF right from the beginning. Now this time, Pay attention, you're not going to use f of 0, that's not actually on the curve. The first value that's on the curve is f of 1. So I'm going to say that's f of 1 plus f of 2 plus f of 3 plus f of 4. Okay, four subintervals, four terms. Now, again, I just want to compare that last one we did to this one. When we did a left-hand Riemann sum, sum, we started with our lower bound. And when we do a right-hand Riemann sum, we skip that lower bound and we end on our upper bound. So kind of a little trick that will help you remember there. And now you just need to go through and evaluate each one. And I've got my 2, 5, 10, 17, add those up. I get a final area of 34, which again we said is an over-approximation. All right, let's try one more. Uh, so we've considered the left, the right, and now let's go ahead and get our midpoint Riemann sum. So again, sketch out that same picture, and I'll meet you back in two seconds. All right, so we're still going four subintervals. Um, we're going to do a midpoint Riemann sum, so as you've probably guessed it by now, that means the midpoint is on the curve. So not the left-hand corner, right-hand corner, exactly the middle of your rectangle. So I'm just going to carefully draw these in. So instead of going like we set up on the left or up on the right, I'm going to find the middle, which is obviously the half. I'm going to put my point there, and then I'm going to go to the right and down, and to the left and down. And I'm going to do the same thing at one and a half. Find my point, go to the right and down, left and down. Two and a half, make sure that middle point's on there. And then three and a half. Okay, now this one's a little harder to tell, especially since my, my pen was so thick, you can't actually see um, on my paper here the above and below part. Clearly there's excess area here. 
Um, but you can probably see it on yours a little better. Here you can almost see I have a little under approximation. I should have some here. Again, it's just a little hard to see with this thick pen. Um, but this one may be hard to tell whether it's an under or over approximation, but we'll find out in just a minute. So let's go ahead and calculate our area. So again, just a nice little base times height. The bases still haven't changed. They all have a base of one. Uh, it's only those heights that are changing. This time, remember, you're always finding that point on the curve. I'm not doing f of 0 or f of 1. I'm doing f of 0.5 plus f of 1.5 plus f of 2.5 plus f of 3.5. All right, so we're picking that point on the curve. And again, just kind of plug and chug, and I believe we should get an area of 25. So there you have it. There's our left, right, and midpoint Riemann sum. Um, we're going to do another example, but we're not going to draw it out each time. Hopefully you can kind of see that pattern. Um, so let me re remind you of the pattern. When we did a left-hand Riemann sum, we started with the lower bound, and we did not use the upper bound. When we did a right-hand Riemann sum, we skipped the lower bound and ended on the upper bound. Um, so let's go ahead and get another one set up. All right, let's integrate from 1 to 2 of x squared plus 1 dx. So you'll notice it's the same exact function, but I'm just narrowing our bounds down a little bit. And I am going to sketch it once, and that'll be it. Notice I'm going from 1 to 2. And let's still go with four sub-intervals. All right, so what that's saying is between 1 and 2, I have to build four rectangles. So think about what that tells you your base is going to be. Between 1 and 2, so that's a difference of 1, I need to build four rectangles. That means each rectangle should have a base of 0.25. So I'll sketch it out once, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to draw my rectangles in just once here, and hopefully we get the idea. Let's start with a left-hand Riemann sum. Okay, so what should be triggering your head is the left-hand corner goes on the, the curve. So I'm going to start at 1. Then I'm going to go up at 1 and a quarter. And we can see that again that it's going to be an under approximation. And let's just set our formula up. Area equals base times height. All my bases are the exact same, so I'm going to leave that as a GCF out front, times all my heights. So because it's a left, we're going to start with that lower bound, f of 1 plus f of 1.25 plus f of 0.5, oops, 1.5 plus f of 1.75. So at this point, I don't actually care what the answer is. I just want to make sure we can set these up. So if you've got that okay, um, try to pause me and, and just set up your own right-hand Riemann sum and see if we agree on the same thing. So again, I'm thinking they all still have a base of 0.25. Okay, so I had basically that distance of 1, and I divided it by 4 rectangles. And again, in, on the right-hand Riemann sum, you're not using the lower bound. So I'm going to start with f of 1.25 plus f of 1.5 plus f of 1.75. And we do want to make sure we end on the upper bound, plus f of 2. All right, last one we'll give a whirl is our midpoint Riemann sum. So we're still doing base times height. These are still just all rectangles. And our base is not changing. We still have that quarter of a base. Uh, but this time, remember, you need to add the number in the middle. That's what we're looking for. So if this is f, I'm sorry, if this is 1.25, I need the number between 1 and 1.25. So basically, I'm just going to find that and divide by 2. So hopefully you're thinking that number that falls in there is 1.125. So again, I've got f of, I'm picking all those midpoints, 1.125 plus f of 1.375 plus f of 1.625 plus f of 1.815. And then again, just kind of plug and chug and we'll get an answer there, but we're not worried about that at the moment, just that setup. Well, I promise you here, this is the last one, example three. Um, and if you can do it on your own, you are in fantastic shape. Um, if not, you know, rewind it, try it again, try to redo them, and uh, we'll, we'll be able to answer some good questions tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to integrate from 0 to 3 of 9 minus x squared dx, 
and we want to make six subintervals. All right, so let's think about how big our base is. If I'm going from zero to three, okay, I'm losing my bounds there. It's a distance of three, and I want to throw in six rectangles. All right, that's telling me I need a base of one half. So see if you can go ahead and set up a right-hand Riemann sum, um, a left-hand Riemann sum, and a midpoint Riemann sum. So pause me, try it on your own, and then I'll talk through it in a few seconds. All right, so I'm going to start with my right-hand Riemann sum. Remember, that's just base times height. We said we had a base of 0.5, and since I'm starting on the right, ooh, baby, since I'm starting on the right, I'm not going to use the lower bound. So I started at my one half. I've got my base, f of 0.5, f of 1, 1.52, 2.5, and f of 3. I'm ending on the upper bound in the right-hand Riemann sum. My left-hand Riemann sum, same idea, but since that's on the left, I'm starting on the lower, left and lower bound. F of 0, 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2, and 2.5. Now remember, if there's six subintervals, I should see six terms. And then midpoint. I basically had to find the midpoint between 0 and a half, so that's my quarter, between a half and one, that's my 0.75. Between one and one half, that's my 1.25. Between my 1 and 0.5 and two, that's my 1.75, etc. So I've got my six pieces there. Now again, I haven't evaluated any of these. We're just setting the formula up at the moment. So hopefully we've got a good base of our left, right, and midpoint Riemann sums. And uh, we'll have a little more practice in class, and then we'll, we'll pick up on trapezoid the following day. Have a great night. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow.